every country has a, a collection of the design provisions and a construction in the form of the specifications that they follow. And those are the rules and the uh, policies that we have to follow as a designer, as a contractor in order to build our buildings or the bridges. And then these, these specifications are continuously are modified, they're updated, and then there are some organizations representing different uh, material that are responsible for really to upkeep it. But all these design provisions and everything that we have, almost all of them are developed by researchers who are a faculty at the universities or a national lab, and they come out of a research. So the researchers are, they write the proposal, and they conduct the research, then they present the research to, to the uh, governing bodies, and then they uh, basically, uh, once it's accepted by everyone, then it gets, becomes a, a specification, gets in the codes, and then we, we follow them. Um, but, but in general, the way, the way the typical research is done, let's say, for example, uh, in one case, we, uh, I'll give one example that, uh, a very recent one that uh, we developed. We developed a new uh, bridge system for in the highly seismic areas. Uh, so what we did, we came up, we envisioned, we envisioned, okay, how we are gonna connect the different elements together. It is very expensive to, uh, uh, to build the entire structures and then full scale and then do these tests. So in order to save basically the money, we modeled portion of the structure and did uh, uh, just a uh, push test or a static test, not, a, not any, any kind of uh, for, uh, the type of the force that in, during the earthquake you will see, let's say dynamic forces. So we studied that, we built a numerical model of that component and uh, we, uh, we figured out how to design it. Then once we did that, then we developed the design provisions and everything was ready, but then we had to do the proof of concept test. The proof of concept test in this case was to build a one-third scale model of the uh, two-span bridge and put it on a uh, shake table. These are the equipment that can simulate the earthquakes. And incorporate the, the connection that we designed and then put it in that one third scale model of two span bridge and then subject the whole structure to different type of a recorded uh, ground motions. And then observed whether it's gonna survive earthquakes or not. And then artificially we basically in the shake table, we increased the magnitude, intensity of the earthquakes until that model basically was uh, close to the collapse. And that uh, this particular case that you are seeing, that we had it on the shake table test, it went, I believe, 2.5 or 2.75 times uh, uh, larger than the maximum uh, earthquake that, that was expected basically the, uh, uh, to be seen and these bridges to be subjected to. Uh, 2.25 times the design earthquake.
So, uh, so we have many tools. We have many tools uh, to really to develop these uh, design provisions. And then once the uh, nowadays, once we have the shake table, then uh, to, that's a proof of concept really more than anything else. Then it goes into the governing specification and then, uh, then the, the designer and contractor can use them.